Hi everybody! So, when I was a kid, there was a stream near where I lived where you could find anything. Old bicycles, prams, uh, shopping trolleys, all kinds of stuff. And we called it the Magic Brook, because you could go there and get stuff. And it seems to a degree that Vivor is like that. I mean, we've done a couple of things with the Vivor. This one I bought. I bought the Viva compressor and we're going to turn it into an engine. Now, you have to do four things with any engine, including a compressor, to do that. First one, convert the engine. Two, create a valve, time the valve to the engine, give it a power supply. So in our case, it's going to be steam or compressed air. All of those things we need to do whatever it is. Now I picked up this compressor from Vivor and I paid for it, so it's not an advertisement for Vivor, although I do think that catalogue is a little awesome. Anyway, let's get on with it. So in order to make this adaptation, most of the work is on the cylinder head. We can put that to one side. So rather than a lot of tedious mucking around with that cylinder head, I bought this. It's a block of engineered aluminium, and what that means is it's got one flat face. It's uh, 20 by 20 centimetres, two centimetres thick, and I need to drill a few holes in there that will allow me to bolt it on the top and drill some ports in. This is the valve chest that came off of it. If I super glue that on there, I can use that as a guide for drilling my holes and then drilling a couple of holes, pop those in, which are eight millimeter brass fittings meant for house plumbing. We've got ourselves a new cylinder head with ports. So there's my new inlet and outlet ports made from plumbing fittings. Now we can get away with this because, um, well, it's a steam engine, so we want to keep the heat in. With an internal combustion engine, you want to get rid of the heat, which is why these things are finned. Finning isn't such a good idea with steam engines and uh, compressed air engines. So I've cut myself a new gasket out of a bit of graffo, and we can bolt that on, and that's our modification finished. Now you notice this, this big step here. Because we've finished with the engine cylinders, but we still need a valve to operate that, and that's going to be where the valve sits. So, in a steam engine, you quite often have uh, drain cocks at the top and the bottom, because, of course, you put in water in there. When the engine is cold, the steam will condense into water, and those cocks help fire it out. Quite a lot of models from smaller size, so things, I'm thinking here, for instance, of the Stewart engines, that's considered to be a little bit of an option, and if we run this on compressed air, it's certainly an option. So I'm going to test it on compressed air before I run on steam, so if I have to put those drain cocks in, I will do. If I don't have to, I won't, obviously. But we'll see how it runs without them, and then if I have to add them, I'll add them. Now, there is only actually one other job to do to this, and that is the flywheel. Now it comes with this, which is a pulley. It's aluminium, it's quite lightweight, and it will do the job, but it's a little too lightweight. And you could modify that by maybe putting lead in those fins, or maybe casting concrete in it, something like that, which would be a simple modification to do to, that, to make that a flywheel. However, I've got this four and a half kilogram cast iron flywheel that I got from an exercise bike, and I really like it because I think it looks engine-y. So you don't really need to do this bit, but it would go right there, and that would give me quite a heavyweight flywheel as well, which I'd rather have, although I could modify the flywheel that the engine came with. There is only one slight problem at that is a taper. I'm not sure if it's a Morse taper or a Jacobs taper, but it's a taper. So I need to measure that taper and then cut that taper on here on the lathe, and then we can flip the flywheel. And <laughs> That's it. Now you don't need to do an awful lot of what I've done, remember. I mean, I had this kicking around from a bicycle. Just use the original. It will work if you don't change it. It might be a little lumpy, but add a bit of weight with concrete or lead if you want to. But you don't need to do that. And obviously, I put it onto a pretty wooden base, because I like pretty wooden bases. And I put these uprights 
here. None of that you need to do. The essential thing you need to do is take off the cylinder head and replace it with a new plate. That new plate has to have a port in and a port out per cylinder, and that's where the valve is going to go. Now, we've done this to a compressor, but you could do exactly the same thing to a four-stroke. Works the same way. If you have a motorcycle engine, you'd be doing exactly the same thing. But that's the engine actually complete. Once you've bolted the whole thing together, you might be worried where top dead centre is. That is a stainless steel straw. They're uh, selling them all over the place. Drop it in, and as you turn that, you'll see the straw going up. When it gets to the top bit, that's top dead centre. When you get down, it'll drop down to the bottom and you'll see bottom dead centre. So you need never open that again. Now, the next stage we need to do is a valve. We need to control the gas going in and the gas coming out, whether it's compressed air or steam or whatever. And we do that through a valve. So for me, that valve space is right there, which is why I got this large piece. But it is a long project. It's a long project because it takes me a while to order the parts. That's, that's really the reason why. And, and with all the other things I've got to do, work it out what it is I need to do. So there's a lot of ways of approaching this valve. I could put a slide valve, I could put a rotary valve, I could do, put a valve that's completely separate from this but use electronic timing. So there's quite a lot of stuff that I can do for that valve as we discussed in the valve video. But that is the engine modification complete and it's the same modification whatever your engine. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying the project. Please look out for the next installment. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.